Okay, so the goal of this last part is just to take all of that filtering, smoothing, processing we did and just package it into a nice sub-VI so we can use it for, for later on. So that's very easy to do. So all I'm going to do is make a new file, just a regular VI, and then save it as, I'll save it as maybe smart smoothing. And a sub-VI is exactly like a regular VI, but I like to label my files sub-VI just so that I know that's how I generally use it. So smart smoothing sub-VI. So I'm just going to go back to our original code here. And remember, this, is, this part is the fictitious data part, and the part we really care about is the stuff going on here. So I'm just going to copy-paste that. I'll copy all of this information, and I'll comment everything, just in case you got confused before. Go back to our smart smoothing sub-VI, paste that, all right, now what's going on is we want just a box which has all of the inputs of a regular low-pass filter. So we need to input the data. So let me, um, I'm going to click on this non-broken wire and say uh, create control. So that's an array control, and I'll call this data, input data, and then wire that up. And so that there would be our time series data. I'll just label this original data just for fun. OK. This code is still messy. You can clean it up on your own time. Um, also, what we need to know is is the sampling frequency. So what I'm going to do is here's this uh, sampling frequency wire on both of these filters. So I'm just going to disconnect those to clean those up. I'm going to right click, say create control sampling frequency and that goes to both filters. And again, we need two filters because we're doing forward, backward filtering. So this is the backward filter. And this is the forwards filter. Okay. And this whole part here is just to get rid of a phase shift, as we discussed earlier, which is a nasty artifact. So get or eliminate phase shift. Okay. So we have sampling frequency. Um, cutoff frequency is already there. So these need to be wired in to the, the number of samples. So I'm just going to clean this up, just bear with me a second, and I'm going to disconnect this array size here, because it's a little messy at the moment. So it's the size of the array. So this part here is padding the data, and the end of data to get rid of the filter artifact. So. And then I think that should be it. And let's clean this up a little bit more. I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need this either. Left click. Uh, Right-click, I mean, create um, indicator, filter data. So importantly, we filtered this data, tw these data twice. 
So you're going to have to account for that in your cutoff frequency when you, when you do this on the user interface side. You can either do that in code. You can either uh, multiply your cutoff frequency here by 2, or just keep track of that when you use this filter in real life. Okay, we can draw a picture of this, edit icon or whatever. Right click, edit icon, do whatever you want. And that's self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go through that. You probably already know how to do that. And my computer is slow, so I'll close that. And now, now all we have to do is just wire these things in. So input data, to get the wiring icon automatically, disconnect that. Um, filtering data on the output. We want our sampling frequency, and we want our cutoff frequency. And I think that should be it. I'm going to save that. So now I'm going to go back to our original file, drag and drop this back into our original file, save the name, because I'm going to mess it up. Just change the name, it's moving to. Now we have our smart filter, sub BI, here, with all the inputs and outputs. Okay, so we now, we now have our smart filter sub BI. We can get rid of most of this stuff here. I'll delete this. So we have our original data coming in. Let me get rid of this wire here. We don't even need this stuff here. Okay. Original data here. Remember our sampling frequency we just arbitrarily set to be 1000. Um, let's do a low cutoff frequency control. And let's set that at 20. I'll keep it at 10, whatever. And then it's going to do a forward-backward filter. Put that in the top input. Compare it with our original data. It should work just the same as it did before. And it does. So now we have a nice pre-packaged filter, which get rid gets rid of the phase shift artifact and that starting artifact we talked about before.